Hello, good evening everybody and welcome to yet another episode of Coffee Camera and Conversation, a monthly video series wherein I talk about the latest things that's happening in the world of camera tech. In this video, we're going to talk about all the new cameras that has released over the past few weeks and what makes them stand out on the already saturated camera market. So let's get started. First thing first, let's talk about the firmware update which the GH5 received and we made a big news in the web all around. Panasonic basically released all the new features and the bug fixes that the firmware update 2.0 will have for the GH5 and one of the most noticeable things is the 400 megabits data rate and the all intra codec recording in 4K mode. Yes, you heard it right. 400 megabits with 4 to 2 10 bit color with all intra codec in 4K recording and that's really a fantastic news for all the GH5 users. Panasonic had already announced the roadmap for this uh, firmware and this was one of the most anticipated features uh, for the GH5. What this makes it for the GH5 users is that it will make it more easier for them to edit these footages and also make it easier for them to grade the footages easily using their NLE which can be either a Premiere Pro or a Final Cut Pro X or any of the uh, NLEs which they prefer to use. Uh, until now the all intra codec was only available at uh, 200 megabits in the full HD mode but this firmware will basically upscale it to the 4K recording with the 400 megabits data rate. The 400 megabit data rate has one uh, particular drawback that is Panasonic uh, claims that you need to have at least a V60 or in the best case a V90 type of card to record this type of footage. Uh, if you don't know what is a V60 or a V90 type of card, you might probably want to look at the video that I made about how to uh, choose a particular memory card for the type of shooting that you are doing. Uh, but for the sake of uh, this particular video, let me tell you that uh, there are not many V90 cards available in the market. There are very handful manufacturers who are actually doing it right now. But the ones which are available in the market are also very expensive. But it's just a matter of days that we get to see a lot more companies coming in and doing a lot of V90 cards and they become more affordable. Another one noticeable feature that Panasonic adds to this firmware update is the HDR recording. Panasonic GH5 will now come with HLG picture profile which is basically hybrid log gamma. What this picture profile will do is that basically you can record broadcast accepted HDR uh, footage which can be uploaded to web or viewed on HDR ready via TVs. Uh, there are companies like Sony, Samsung and LG which are actually making HDR TVs and if you have one of those or have an access to use one of those then you would definitely like to try out this particular uh, picture profile. Even if you don't and if you want to deliver in HDR mode, uh, please keep in mind that the YouTube actually supports uh, HDR videos. For the folks who actually have HDR TVs and view the YouTube content on them, they'll be able to experience the complete HDR features that you deliver it on the web. The third most important uh, feature that comes in as a part of the uh, firmware update 2.0 is that high resolution anamorphic video. GH5 allows you to record anamorphic video either using the anamorphic lenses or anamorphic lens adapters but now you'll be able to record 6K high resolution anamorphic video in camera and also GH5 now comes with a de-squeeze function introduced inside the camera itself so that you don't have to actually uh, unload the footage, put it into your NLE and de-squeeze it and have a look at it. All the video that you are going to deliver will be viewable on the camera itself and it comes assisted with things like uh, uh, overlaying crop marks like 2.35 is to 1 or 2.39 is to 1 type of crop marks available on the LCD screen so that you can frame it and shoot it the way you want it and have the footage ready for your editing. There are a few other uh, improvements that GH5 has uh, undergone. Well, one of the noticeable one has to be for the autofocus performance. GH5 uh, since the date of its release uh, has been in the news for the autofocus performance. There has been there have been people who have been getting very good autofocus performance. There are people who are cribbing and complaining even as of this date but the firmware update actually fixes a lot of uh, autofocus issues as well as improves the in-body image st stabilization that GH5 comes with. One of the features which I personally liked a lot about the GH5 is the function button and the way you can customize them. You might probably recall the first impression video that I did about GH5. I, this was one of my favorite feature in the GH5 and the firmware actually brings a lot of new features that can be added to this function button and you can make your camera more customized and you can customize it to the way you shoot and you need it at the time of the shoot. 
from the micro four third uh, gh5 let's move to the other company which does micro four third camera which is olympus olympus released a brand new entry level camera called omd em10 mark 3 uh, which as i told is basically a entry level camera which is targeted more of at the photographers rather than the video market but what they actually did in this particular camera is they introduced a very basic form of 4k which companies like canon are failing to do so even in uh, entry level full frame camera like the 6d mark 2 uh, 4K video was one of the most anticipated things in the 6D Mark II but Canon failed to introduce it in their camera but companies like Olympus even in their entry level cameras are trying to bring in 4K so that people can try out and get used to the 4K video before they can upgrade to the flagship series in their particular brand. The OMD EM10 Mark III also carries forward a lot of uh, good features like the in-body image stabilization and autofocus from their flagship series. Along with that it comes with a Trupic 8 processor and a 16 megapixel sensor. So this definitely has to be one of the cameras that you can look forward to when you want to pick up a camera primarily for a photo use but want to get into the world of 4K videos and try to experiment something around that. From the micro four third market let's now move over to the full frame market. When we talk about full frame cameras, the first name that comes in uh, over the last few weeks is the Nikon D850. Yes, Nikon released their much awaited Nikon D850 which is a full frame 46 megapixel CMOS sensor based camera. It's a DSLR and this was one camera which had created a lot of uh, enthusiasm among the people. A lot of people were expecting what sort of specs it will come with, will it really come with a 4K video because the cameras like uh, Canon 5D Mark IV which is the competitor to Nikon D850 didn't have a very good 4K video mode. So everyone were looking forward to the full frame DSLR with the 4K video and those type of things and Nikon didn't disappoint. Along with the things that it can shoot 7 frames per second and 8K time lapse. Nikon has now introduced 4K video into their, uh, into their full frame DSLR. This with absolutely no crop. Yes, you heard it right. Nikon D850 can shoot full frame 4K videos and this when compared to the Canon 5D Mark IV which shoots a 1.73x crop in their 4K video mode. Nikon D850 can also shoot uh, full HD videos in 120 frames per second in a DX mode. Uh, this is again uh, when you compare it with the Canon 5D Mark IV. Uh, this is something which Canon struggles even at 720p. So all in all said D850 is one particular camera which definitely gonna make a lot of buzz around in the market. And in one of the recent articles that I saw I think about a couple of uh, days back. The D850 has already been sold out even before the camera is being uh, available in the market the pre-order has gone bonkers and this is one camera which you have to look forward to in this particular year so talking about full frame cameras and 4k cameras one another camera news that will be really uh, sensational what i can say is that sony sony will be releasing full frame cinema camera on september 6th uh, cinema cameras are something which are dominated by companies like RED, ARRI and even up to an extent by Sony. But all of these cameras are Super 35 uh, sensor cameras and there is not a single digital full frame sensor camera which is available in the market which makes it difficult for somebody to be a game changer in this particular uh, stream. So what uh, Sony announced a few months back and what they'll be going to do on September 6th is that uh, they'll be releasing a new full frame cinema camera in the Cine Alta series. Cine Alta series is the same series wherein they have the Super 35 F65 camera which is one of the fantastic cameras that is available in the market right now when it comes to cinema shooting. So this particular camera we don't know the name yet or whether it will replace F65 or whether it will sit on top of F65. Uh, this is a camera which will be capable of shooting 16 bit raw footages and on the price point perspective, uh, it's expected to be somewhere uh, onwards of $30,000. Yes, these type of cameras are not cheap. These are very expensive cameras. But full frame cinema cameras is something that will definitely be a game changer in the market. And I'll definitely look forward to see what uh, companies like Red and Ari gonna do after uh, this camera comes out into the market from Sony. Talking about Sony, one another uh, reason why Sony was in uh, news over the past few days was with their what I can call it as a point of view camera. They released a camera called RX0 uh, which is basically a one inch stacked CMOS sensor based uh, camera uh, which I would personally would like to call it as a GoPro killer because GoPro comes with a 1 by 2 third inch sensor and this is nowhere uh, comparable with what Sony can deliver. The Sony camera has uh, 4K capabilities, it can record 
4K externally, not internally, but 4K externally because it can output uh, clean uh, 4K signals over HDMI to be recorded using something like a Inferno or similar recorders. And also it has slow motion capabilities in the camera. It has things like 16 frames per second shooting. It has S-Log picture profile. It comes with focus peaking and all the um, video assist features that you get in higher end cameras. And more so it is clubbed with the 24mm f4 Zeiss lens. So Sony and Zeiss combination has already been a winning combination and this particular camera will definitely be one of the uh, most sought after point of view camera uh, in the market in the coming days or in the coming months. At, from a price point perspective it's uh, tagged at around $700 which is very very steep but if you look at the specifications I'm definitely sure that Sony even claims that this particular camera is waterproof and splash proof and crash proof and all those stuff uh, they have released a whole uh, set of accessories to go along with things like cages and underwater housing and mounts and such stuff and uh, their promo video looks very promising and uh, this is going to be available in the market by end of September or probably around in October uh, because I have personally tried out uh, point of view cameras from so many different brands uh, everything from GoPro to third parties company like SJ4000 or even Sony series and I personally even have one of the E cameras but uh, this type of camera that is RX0 which has a one inch sensor is definitely a, a game changing camera when it comes to this part of uh, form factor. Uh, talking about uh, cameras which are small to let's move over to the cameras which fly. Uh, we are talking about drones and DJI released uh, two new drones in the market uh, just last week. One of them is the Mavic Pro Platinum and the other being the Phantom 4 Pro Obsidian. The Phantom uh, drone it's basically a matte black version of whatever is already available so not much of a feature change there but when it comes to the Mavic uh, Pro Platinum uh, it basically has two new features one of them is a reduced uh, sound that comes from a drone these drones are like very noisy I've used one and we see a lot of people flying it around they're like very noisy uh, flying cameras but what DJ has actually done is that according to the spec sheet uh, this new uh, drone has about a four decibel lesser sound emission compared to the previous models and along with that a uh, Mavic also comes with an extended flight time uh, drones are very notorious for very short flight times and they're usually around uh, 15 to 20 minutes or anywhere around that depending on the type of drone that you are using but uh, Mavic uh, Pro Platinum comes with 30 minutes of flight time uh, this is all thanks to the new propeller and uh, driver designs that they have incorporated and if you are one of the DJI Spark users or somebody who is planning to buy Spark uh, there is some good news for you as well DJI has uh, introduced a new uh, feature called Sphere Mode into their DJI Spark which will allow you to take 360 degree photos or those tiny planet kind of uh, photos using your DJI Spark Continuing about drones, one another drone which had made a lot of news last year, uh, a drone which promised to fly if you throw it out of your hand was Lily. Yes, you're, we're talking about the Lily drone which never came into the market. The Lily drone was able to capture about $35 million uh, in crowdfunding and in January uh, this year they shut down the shop because they were not able to bring out the drone and, prom uh, and deliver whatever they had promised. This even led to people suing them for this particular aspect. But uh, somewhere a uh, few months back, a California based company called uh, Mota Group basically uh, acquired this company or sort of have a stake in this company and they have promised to bring back a Lily drone. So the new Lily drone, the 2017 Lily drone will not be the same Lily as what was promised in the marketing videos last year. This will not fly out of your hand when you throw it. But uh, this is a drone which will now come with 4K recording features and a lot of automated features which you find in Mavic and Spark and even higher end drones. And most however, this drone is expected to be much cheaper at about $500 and probably around $800 for the complete kit with couple of extra batteries and propeller guards and controllers and things like that. So pricing point, it will definitely be competitive but uh, this will be a 4K video uh, camera capable drone and if you actually have a look at this particular uh, 
uh, pictures, the first pictures of the Lily drone 2017, it looks much similar to the GoPro Karma which never came into the market. It had so many issues. The foldable arms, the form factor, the shape, everything looks very similar to the GoPro Karma. But definitely this is not a GoPro Karma in disguise. But uh, this is Lily drone 2017 and this is something which will be hitting the market anytime soon, uh, probably in the Q4 of this year and something which you might want to consider if you want to get into the drones and 4k videos at a more affordable price point so that's it for this video uh, this is what i wanted to share with you guys all the new things that has come into the market cameras which i personally feel are game changers the features which are available in some of these cameras at the price point are really outstanding what are the things that you found fascinating or something which you are looking forward to in these cameras please let me know in the comments below also talking about uh, the videos that are coming up i'll be releasing a video the first impression and the review of the tamron 18 to 400 ultra zoom lens the world first and only 22.2x uh, dslr lens that is available in the market i had a chance to use this particular lens over the last few days and uh, I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, you might want to look forward to the video in the coming days. I even have lined up a quite a few tutorials on Photoshop and Lightroom in the coming days. So you might want to uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out those particular tutorials and reviews. If you want to look at anything specific in this particular channel related to photo or video so that I can make a video about it in the coming days. So that's it for this video and this is me Shiv signing off and I'll see you guys again in the next one.